So, what exactly is vignarola? Well, it is a Roman dish, usually made in the springtime when lots of spring vegetables are available. One of the key things to it, though, are carciofi, which are artichokes. But here are some of the other things that go into it. You've got to flavor some oil with pancetta. Then you have some spring onions, or you could use scallions, you could use shallots, whatever you want, or just a regular onion. You've got either artichoke hearts that are frozen, or you could work with fresh. We've got peas, we've got lettuce, and I'm going to add some lima beans. Usually fava beans would be more appropriate, but you know what? They're out of season. So we'll add lima beans just kind of to approximate the fava beans. So let's start with putting the pancetta in a pan and flavoring it with a little bit of olive oil. So pancetta, you know, is unsmoked Italian bacon. Here it is diced. You can fry that in your grocery store. So we diced it up, it's about a quarter of a pound. So I'm gonna put it in a frying pan with a little bit of oil. Get that going over some medium heat. So let's put that in and we'll just watch that. So while that's cooking, let me talk to you about the vegetables. Well, if you have baby artichokes, like the ones you get in Rome, they are thornless, but we don't have that type here. We have what is called the globe artichoke. And most of the artichokes in the United States come from Castorville in California. That's the artichoke capital of the United States. So it's a very different variety. So it's not thornless and it's not, it is not chokeless. So when I get them out of the garden, I trim those little thorns off, see? Just around the edges. A lot of people just take these leaves off and throw them away but they're good to eat, so don't do that. I might take the outer, first outer layer away, but other than that, you want the whole thing. And also the stem, which in Italian is called the gambo. The gambo is good. So all you really want to do is take the outer part of that off, and then you have this nice, really tender, tender part. So I have to go back and see what's happening here with my sizzle. And that's looking good. I'm going to have to move that around a little bit. Okay. Now, I'm going to put that on low because now we have to add some onions to that. So as little or as much as you like. And that looks to be about enough. They go right in the pot with the pancetta. You, see, you hear that squeaky noise? That tells you that that's a really fresh artichoke. So you gotta go around your board like that and then you gotta open it up. And in there is the choke. And that you have to get out. So now you have to be like an archeologist. So you go in there and I like to use a, a melon ball or get a, a grapefruit spoon. Something that has a little bit of an edge to it. You can pull out those light colored leaves and get right down there to the hairy choke part. Would we'll cut across the artichoke. Now this is all gonna get mixed together. All of these vegetables are gonna be mixed together. And the name Vignarola comes from the fact that in Italy, you don't waste any land at all, none whatsoever. It's all used for growing something, crops, whatever it is. And so, the Italians would actually plant vegetables in the vineyard around the vines. And that became the name of this dish, vignarola, from vigna, meaning vineyard. So the dish takes its name from the fact that these vegetables, or others like them, were planted around grapevines. All right, get the rest of that. So I'm gonna chop this one up now. Got that choke out. Thin slices if you can. Cut up that stem too, because that's all good. And you let that sit in the water for a while. About 10 minutes. 10 minutes later, we can put that in the pan with the pancetta. Mix them around a little bit, just to flavor them a little bit. And now we're going to add a little chicken broth. 
about a half a cup. We're going to put the cover on and allow this to cook oh, for about 10 minutes, just until the artichokes are tender. So here we have some romaine lettuce. And you know, this is a good recipe to use when you have lettuce that's kind of like going a little bit, that's limp, you don't know what to do with it. It's great in this dish because we're going to cook it. So what you want to do is just shred up some of those lettuce leaves, see, just like that. And this is going to go in last because of course this isn't going to take very long to cook at all. So there's our lettuce. So now we can put in the limas and or fava if you have them. It would be much more traditional with fava, of course. Here they go. They're in. You want to mix those around. Now you can begin to see how we're building this dish, cooking the vegetable that takes the most time first and the vegetable that takes the least time last. So in they go. That's going to cook for about two or three minutes. So in goes the lettuce, the peas. You want to mix all of this around. Look at how, I mean, is this healthy or what? This is a really wonderful spring dish. And if you find that your pan is a little dry, you could add a little bit more chicken broth. You could add water if you wanted to. So I'm going to let that wilt down just for a couple minutes. Then I'm going to give it some salt, pepper, and later on a little bit of mint. But this would go with chicken, with pork, beef. Look at this. All healthy stuff. I gave it a little bit of salt and pepper. So that looks great. And then I just like to dress it up a little bit with some mint leaves. So another spring herb. So we're thinking spring here. So a little mint and vignarola is ready. Mm -hmm.